In this video, we're going to take a look at 10 of the worst quests in Baldur's Gate 3, based largely on their lack of rewards, tedious gameplay, or negative repercussions. Starting things off, we have the Gauntlet of Shar. While the majority of Baldur's Gate 3's main questline felt solid throughout, this questline in particular sticks out as being frustrating the first time you do it and tedious for all future playthroughs. The Gauntlet begins with the Soft Step Trial, a stealth mission which can quickly grow frustrating if attempted legitimately, as being spotted by a roaming invisible ghost will reset any progress made. Once completed, you have the Self Same Trial where you face off in combat against mirrored copies of your own team, punishing you for creating strong characters. The final trial is an invisible maze. For many players, this was the most frustrating puzzle in the entire game, as it's not really clear why you're failing it most of the time. And nearly everyone ended up just jumping their way through rather than solving the maze using the intended path. And worst of all, there's not much reward for doing the quest properly. The only silver lining to this quest is that you can technically skip the entire thing by using knock on the final door. So if you're on your second playthrough, I'd recommend skipping it rather than facing those frustrations again. In at number 9, we have Chicken Chasing. During Act 1 in the Goblin's Camp, you'll find an opportunity to wager gold and chase their chicken through a course. The idea for this unmarked side quest really isn't that bad, but the problems arise when you realize guiding this chicken through the course is unexplainably difficult, as the chicken just doesn't seem to move where you want it to. It's also easy to accidentally fail the quest instantly by speaking to the chicken using animal handling or by bringing a second party member to the starting area. Not only is that frustrating, but if you complete the quest properly, you don't actually earn any other reward. Even if you wagered 300 gold, all you're given back is your original 300 gold, something that many players probably didn't even realize as it's not explained to you. This quest mainly made the list because it's the only quest in the game where the controls feel clunky while also not being fun or rewarding. Coming in at number 8, Free the Artist. Beginning in Act 1, you'll have the opportunity to meet an artist held captive by the Zentarim. You'll have the chance to free him here, either through paying off the Zentarim or by defeating them in battle, but both options lead to Ostra fleeing the area, unlocking the second stage of the quest in Act 3. Once there, you'll be able to locate him again in Lady Janeth's mansion. If it's your first time doing the quest upon walking in, you'll probably be confused when the furniture starts flying at your face, as there are invisible poltergeists around messing with you. After speaking with Lady Janeth, they'll even start to attack you. Afterwards, this quest turns into a gauntlet to run upstairs while the skulls and random furniture attack you. These cursed items can be destroyed, but they spawn enemies which are more trouble than they're actually worth. When you reach the attic, you can solve a simple puzzle to reveal a door with a hidden note. Reading this note basically explains that coming here was useless, as you need to track down somebody else for some further information. With this information, you can track down the mystic Carrion, you can complete a quest for him, buy the torch of revocation off of him, or just steal the torch. But no matter what you pick, you have to return to the attic by going through the haunted house crap again. Then you can use the torch to destroy the possessed painting, freeing the spirit trapped within. Returning to Oscar prompts a dialogue with the ghost where you can then complete the quest. You do at least get a unique reward. You'll receive a painting of a random companion in your party, a painting that you can't even place properly onto walls and it doesn't actually do anything. Pretty lame if you ask me and many other people in the community. However, one cool part of this quest is that by siding with the ghost and allowing it to kill Oscar, you'll be given a unique ring which automatically revives you when downed once per long rest, making it one of the only quests in the game where choosing the evil outcome has a more interesting reward. At number 7, Resolve the Abduction. During Act 2, upon arrival in the Last Light Inn, players can speak with either True Soul Marcus or Isabel to begin the quest Resolve the Abduction. It's a quest which takes place entirely within a single encounter and has a few possible outcomes. The easiest way to do the quest is to side with Isabel, defeat Marcus, and help her survive. But if done this way, it's not really a memorable or even a bad quest at all. However, if you fail to save Isabel or you intentionally decided to do the evil questline siding with Marcus, then you've basically screwed yourself out of a large portion of the rest of the game in exchange for next to nothing. The second Isabel is downed, you've just locked yourself out of several quests. You lose one companion, seven possible allies for the final section of the game, and get immediately thrown into a second, much more challenging encounter, while also making the final boss of Act 2 an even more difficult fight because Isabel's now at Kethrick's side. Your reward for doing all that? You can earn one additional Elithid Parasite power from Zarel in Moonrise Towers. Like I get the evil quest line wasn't meant to be as beneficial, but this is probably the second most punishing quest in the entire game, and it's actually possible to just get unlucky with Isabel and she sometimes just goes down on her own early on, meaning this can happen to you by complete accident. The only saving grace for this quest is that you can easily just not do it. Don't speak to Isabel ever and the quest never starts, saving yourself from all of these potential risks. At number 6, our fiery friend, also known as Carlax Companion Questline. While most of the quests on this list are bad because of disappointing rewards or locking you out of certain content, the word bad might not even correctly describe Carlax, as her storyline is certainly the most controversial of any companion, mainly because 
it was intentionally designed to be a bittersweet end for this beloved character. You'll start the quest by bringing Infernal Iron to the blacksmith Damon, who helps you temporarily patch her Infernal Engine to prevent her from burning up. But soon after doing this, he informs you that she'll die soon unless she returns to the Hells. And that's about the entire quest. Outside of that, you help her to experience a somewhat normal life for the first time in ages, and can even help defeat the man who ruined her life. But in the end, you can't fix her. Her only options are return to the Hells to continue fighting forever, turn into a Mind Flayer husk, or stay in Baldur's Gate to die. What left many players confused is that you're able to learn that the Gondians in Act 3 are familiar with engines like hers, as Gortash's Steel Wash guards mistake her for one of their own. So why didn't Larian just make the Gondians the solution for her? Instead, this quest received more backlash from the community than any other, because no matter what you do, it doesn't actually matter. Larian did at least acknowledge the issue and attempt to resolve it by adding the endgame cinematic, explaining that she's working on a fix of her own in Avernus. But many players were hoping for an expansion to her content with some possible DLC to go there and help. But with Larian announcing that there will never be any DLC content for Baldur's Gate 3, it seems Karlak's story may never be resolved in a way that many players wanted. The community's just gonna have to accept that not everyone in Faerun can have their fairy tale ending. Number 5. Investigate the Suspicious Toys Near the refugee camp in Rivington, you can stumble upon a donation of toys meant for the refugee children stuck outside the city. However, interacting with these toys causes them to explode, starting what initially seems like an interesting quest to track down whoever donated these dangerous toys. Further exploration into the Rivington mansion progresses this quest where you'll discover that a nearby toy maker was blackmailed into doing this by the workers of the fireworks shop, tasking you to investigate said shop in the lower city. During your investigation of the shop, you'll learn it's being ran by Gortash's thugs to disguise their use of smoke powder. And no matter what you do, the quest turns into kill Gortash's men because they're the bad guys. That's all there is to it. There's no depth. No way to go to the guards with what you found, or even try to blackmail Gortash with information that you've discovered his secret operations. In the end, the reason they wanted to hurt the refugees is because these people are evil. Not much of a story for a quest that started out pretty cool. Many players posted about this quest online, thinking that they must have screwed up something or misunderstood somewhere. But that's the thing, they didn't. The quest simply feels unfinished and out of place compared to the rest of the game. For number 4, I'm including every quest which involves 20 NPCs in a single fight. More specifically, quests like Avenge Gut Circle, Infiltrate the Moonrise Colony, and Confront the Elder Brain. I wanted to make this one a shared option because it's not that the quests themselves are bad. They all have interesting stories, decent rewards, and they don't really lock you out of any content. These quests just share a feature that during the quest, the combat is incredibly frustrating to do. For some of these fights, it felt like the game desperately needed a fast forward option. I really love this game, but any encounter with 20 NPCs involved in it, I will find any way possible to avoid because it doesn't feel like the game was designed with those battles in mind. Performance takes a hit, it wastes your time, and you'll be bored doing these encounters on a second playthrough because of it. Thankfully, every quest involving a battle like this have alternative ways to handle them or secret paths that you can take, so it doesn't end up overall hurting the game, but they still suck. Number 3, Dribbles the Clown. Early in Act 3, after defeating a doppelganger version of Dribbles the Clown in the circus, you'll be given a quest to track down the original Dribbles the Clown's missing limbs so he can be reanimated by a necromancer. On paper, the quest is just a boring fetch quest, requiring 7 unique body parts that can be found all throughout Act 3. Not only are these limbs quite well hidden and easily missed even when standing in the correct location, but one of them is found just outside Ball's Temple, an area that many players would do as the final task before completing the game. Finishing this quest without a guide requires a lot of time and extensive exploration. So after all that work, you probably expect to at least meet the original Dribbles the Clown again cracking jokes at the circus, right? But no, the only reward are the Spellmite Gloves, the same gloves that you could have just pickpocketed it off the quest giver from the start. But probably worst of all about this quest is after completing it and long resting one time, the entire circus leaves, losing access to multiple vendors who provide unique items instantly. With Larian adding the epilogue, I figured Dribbles could have at least shown up at our party to thank us, but for now, this quest comes off as the biggest waste of time in all of Baldur's Gate 3. At number 2, we have Raid the Emerald Grove. Earlier I mentioned that the abduction quest was the second most punishing in the game, while well, Raiding the Grove easily tops that. During Act 1, you can speak with Minthara in the Goblin Camp to give her the location of the grove and initiate the Goblin's Raid, beginning a slaughter of all the tieflings and druids inside. Raiding the Grove this way doesn't prove much of a challenge, as you'll have allies on your side for each of the fights. There's also not really any unique or interesting encounters when done this way. While the quest certainly is memorable for its dark themes and has several unique cutscenes, including the Goblin Party afterwards, the consequences for this choice makes it easily the worst decision you can make for the entire game. Completing this one quest blocks you out of many Act 2 and 3 storylines. You'll lose access to Karlak, Will, and Halson immediately. Then you need to pass a dialogue check to stop Gale from leaving as well. Multiple late game equipment vendors are killed here, and 5 available allies for the endgame Gather Your Allies questline are completely wiped out too. All in exchange for one night with Minthara, who even after doing this, requires another dialogue check and additional quests in Act 2 to get her to join your camp. 
camp. But because of community feedback, Larian eventually changed her to be available without even doing this quest. So the only reason to actually do the raiding the grove quest in the game is to either roleplay as a murder hobo or sleep with Minthara. I feel bad putting such an interesting one as the second worst quest in the game, but when they removed Minthara from the list of exclusive rewards for the quest, this went from C tier into its own category of dumpster tier. And lastly, we have Save the Gondians. Located in the Steel Watch Foundry in Act 3, the player can speak with the leader of the Gondians to begin the worst questline in the game. The first step involves a visit to the Iron Throne, where you're faced with one of the most unique encounters the game has to offer. You have limited turns to save all the Gondians trapped in this underwater prison and escape the ship alive afterwards. Because it's unique, many people found this one to be a fun little puzzle, but saving everyone is quite challenging due to the time limit. So let's say you manage to save every Gondian in here, your quest is still not done. Your next step is to return to the Foundry and delve deeper inside to save each even more enslaved Gondians. During these encounters, whenever you kill an enemy, they can drop a motivator which must be interacted with or it insta-kills the Gondians nearby. Additionally, the Gondians in this second room tend to get themselves killed through pure stupidity. Even on the easiest difficulty, you'll struggle to try and keep them all alive. Afterwards, they'll help you to destroy the Steel Watch Foundry, and if the Iron Hand gnomes are around, you'll need to choose sides. Siding with the Iron Hands grants you their help in the final encounter against the Netherbrain, while choosing to side with the Gondians leads to nothing. And I just want to point out that this is almost certainly not intended. When I data mine this quest, you'll see that there's supposed to be a reward that the Gondians give you a Steel Watch ally for the final battle of the game. That would have actually made this quest worthwhile. But as of patch 6, roughly 7 months after the game's release, there is no known way to get this. I spent hours personally saving every single Gondian to test it out to make sure, and then I spent several more hours researching every Baldur's Gate community on the internet, and as far as I can tell, there is no Steel Watch ally at the end of this quest. So unless it's something that no player has discovered yet, the entire questline to save the Gondians is painful, tedious, and completely unrewarding. Do yourself a favor and ignore them. Unless you work at Larian Studios, then please add the Steel Watch ally to the game like it's intended, or feel free to leave a comment saying I'm an idiot and it's been in the game all along. Now with that rant off my chest, what do you think was the worst quest in Baldur's Gate 3? Do you agree with the order of my list, or did I miss one completely? Let me know in the comments below. If you found any of this information useful, leave a like and try checking out some of the other content on my channel. As always, thanks for watching, have yourself a wonderful day, Proxy out.